How you doing, folks? Well, the beetle is going back to the body shop, so uh, it's time to get those uh, body issues put right by somebody who actually knows what they're doing. So I've gotten quite a few recommendations for a certain individual up in Navan. So it's about an hour drive for me to bring this up there. So it's uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to do some road wordiness checks on this and make sure that it's actually going to be all right and it's going to be safe for the journey. Right, so the first thing I've noticed is, uh, although everything's looking all right around here, the electric brake booster pump is not working. So what I need to do is find out why that is. And straight away, I'm gonna guess that that's got something to do with it down there. Household electrical cable, bloody hell. <laughs> well, if it works, it works. All right, um, yeah, so up here we have the connector for the electric brake booster. And if an earth connection up there and the positive supply. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a test light on that and see if it's getting power. Okay. So as I suspected, there's no power going to it. But let's just make sure that we're getting power somewhere under here. Or at least tests the test light. So that's going on on this side of this connector. Hmm. There's power on, on that side. None on that side. So if I plug this in there, oh, what's to stop it? You, for the temporary for a temporary exercise, you can use that connection there. The thing is, though, we don't know if that that uh, that can carry the current needed. So let's see if we can actually get that fixed first of all. Given that I had the dashboard out, the likelihood is, is there's something disconnected in behind the fuse panel because I actually had the fuse panel out as well. Uh, now, I'm not entirely sure where the feed comes from for that uh, uh, for that particular function, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a look through and see if there's anything obvious first of all. Well, I think I found our, our culprit anyway here. So this is the, um, what do you call it, uh, the little distribution block here. Um, I just uh, took out the two screws that hold the fuse panel in place. So I suppose it's fairly simple to put that back on. Um, I'm thinking it was on that spade terminal there. Now I, I want to find out what that fuse actually is for uh, because the last thing I want to do is to, to put too much power on something that's not intended to, ha to handle it. And then, oh look, there's another one behind us there. It's actually off as well. So that, uh, that could also be an issue. Yeah. All right, well, let's, uh, let's, let's get some wiring done. Oh uh, yeah, typical. All right, so now it was pretty obvious where those wires went, so uh, hey, we're in business. It's working now. So, happy days. And uh, it's sounding an awful lot more healthy than it was when it was on that other one. So, uh, yeah, great, that's, uh, that's that sorted. So next thing we need to do is uh, just do a few other checks, make sure it's uh, driving all right. I'll take it out for a short spin on the road and see how we're looking then. Incidentally, that uh, electric brake booster pump will be uh, will be going because uh, it wasn't a great idea. The servo was fantastic, but uh, not the um, not the electric booster because it just, to be honest with you, it, it gives a very strange feel to the brakes. They kind of pulsate, and um, yeah, I'm going to drill the manifold and uh, tap one of the ports and uh, take a vacuum off the engine, which is what's intended to happen. Okay, so tyre pressures are checked, oil is checked, even the washer bottle is topped up. Had to fix something there because the uh, hose had split, so uh, that's uh, now going to work as well. So, uh, yeah, every, every little bit of progress helps on this car. And, uh, yeah, the next thing to do is to take it for a spin, put some petrol in it, and uh, get some heat into the engine to make sure everything is right. And uh, once we're at that point, then hopefully we'll be um, a little bit more confident. All right. Let's get it down to the garage anyway and get some petrol in it for a start. There are issues with the engine that I know about and uh, they will be sorted out at a later date. I mean, it's actually, it, sound a lot, it sounds a lot rougher than it is. It's just that there's an idle jet blocked on one of the carbs. So um, it's kind of running on three cylinders. But once you get a bit of heat into it, it'll actually be fine. But uh, Got good oil pressure and all that anyway, so. All right. 
Ich Exhaust actually as well, which is another thing that needs to be sorted out. It's um, I'm going to actually take the exhaust off altogether. But what I'm doing is I'm going to wait until I have the uh, the ramp sorted out in my garage to do that because it's a pain in the face trying to do on your back. It's just very hard to get it right. But no, it feels okay now. I mean, it's it's uh, it's motoring along all right now. Uh, by the way, tire pressures are something very important to keep uh, keep on top of in Beetles. They just seem to be very pernickety about the about the tire pressures been right. They handle like a dog if the tire pressures anyway wrong. So I have an 18 on the front and 27 on the rear, and it seems to be right for this car as well. I know it sounds very low, but. video on this car and saw that the issue I had scary is the word all right so we have petrol now actually a fun car to drive I have to be honest and I keep forgetting that Just something to be fixed. See, it's uh, it's idling now. I mean, okay, it's not idling well, but it is idling. So, uh, yeah, I mean, once you get a bit of heat into the engine, it's fine in that regard. So, uh, it's much more drivable. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's hit the open road and get it uh, get it up to Navan. Okay, so we're motoring along anyway now. So um, it's as I said, it's an hour journey. And the car is driving all right. I mean, yeah, as I said, that idle jet thing is a bit of a pain in the face, but other than that, it's it's going okay. And uh, as I said, I've good, con I've uh, a fair bit of confidence that we'll uh, we'll get there in one piece. Sound of this. You got 
gotta love Webbers. <laughs> Until they block their idle checks, which unfortunately they're inclined to do. Of course I'm stuck behind a tractor pulling a Jay's slurry tanker on a road that there is nowhere to overtake on. Ah yeah. Just to give you a little bit of info about this car. I have had it for about 13 years now. I got it before I, uh, before I even met my now wife. Um, I came back, I had been living in France for about a year and when I came back I had a, uh, a de desire to get a Beetle. And um, this one came up, it was for sale down in Cork. Now the previous owner had imported it from the UK and uh, superficially it looked good, you know, I mean it was, uh, it was silver at the time and had uh, a set of 17 inch um, uh, combo mode of alloys on it and uh, uh, lowering struts on the front stuff like that and uh, a few other little, uh, little modifications and that but as I said it was superficially all right there were a few blemishes in the paintwork and stuff like that but um, I, uh, I drove it for a couple of years and I had a 1300 engine at the time this being a 1303 S should have had a 1600 engine but anyway it had the 1300 in it and uh, the engine was okay you know it I used it as my daily for quite a while and uh, for a couple of years anyway and then I sent it in for restoration so at the time then I uh, I put it in it was uh, yeah it was starting to show uh, show kind of rubble uh, or bubbles and uh, rust spots and stuff like that here and there on it so uh, the, the place I got to restore it got stuck in body off uh, bare metal restoration and uh, found a hell of a lot of rust the heater channels were gone in it it was absolutely red rotten in parts we just didn't expect it had been well concealed so um, yeah it was like brown paper and uh, duct tape and stuff like that holding together structural parts of the car so it needed a lot of work but we got the work done anyway and put it back on the road and the restoration job that was done at the time was done to a very high standard and uh, at the same time I got the 1915cc engine built for it then and uh, when I got it back it was my daily again then at that point so uh, I used it um, uh, I used it then when I got it back from restoration uh, yeah okay it's very fairly heavy on, on petrol but that being said the 1915cc engine is no heavier on petrol than the 1300 engine was and it's a, a much nicer engine to drive so uh, as you can well imagine but uh, yeah I mean using it uh, daily for kind of five six years started to take its toll on it and uh, unfortunately then in 2015 um, my wife and I were involved in a bad smash uh, where this car was rear-ended by a stolen car so we uh, uh, basically I was laid up I was badly injured at the time I won't get into all that but I was badly injured and uh, I was three months out of commission and uh, during that period of time um, the car was laid up and uh, you know it, it, to be honest with you the car hadn't sustained much damage actually more of the injuries that I sustained happened when I got out of the car uh, to approach the driver but it kind of gives you an idea as to what happened so um, anyway yeah uh, after that point it wasn't really my daily anymore I used it for a bit after that once I got it fixed up and everything but it was you know um, I kind of fell out of love with it for a while you know and um, and I, I was kind of yeah it was a second car then at that point but it deteriorated beyond that point anyway and uh, got, got to a point then when it needed another restoration which is when I brought it into that other puppet down in, uh, in Rush who uh, promised the sun, moon and stars to do uh, to rejuvenate it. Now at the time it looked like it just needed rear, uh, it just needed a set of four uh, wheel arches and uh, a little bit of a spruce up here and there but unfortunately there, uh, there had been some rot that crept in around the front end. Uh, things like the uh, wheel arches, uh, the inner arches spring mounts and the front structure of the car and stuff like that so uh, there was a bit of a, a bit of panel work that needed to be done there so uh, new panels were welded in bumper hangers on the rear as well basically places where water was being splashed up uh, from driving and stuff like that you know because don't forget I was using it on salty roads and that as well so that took its toll so anyway if I had gotten it restored it was always going to be my second car again then it was going to be the uh, the kind of uh, the fun car and uh, I got the engine refreshed at that point too 
and um, got got some porting work done in the heads, changed the camshaft, freshened it all up on that as well. But um, unfortunately, since then, it just hasn't been getting used simply because of the fact that I was just not happy with the work that was done, and I don't trust that it's. Um, structurally sound you know there's elements of it like i think if i if god forbid i were to crash this car now especially in the left quarter i i have my suspicions that, the, that it would crease up uh, and it would just disintegrate so i i just don't trust that that's safe enough especially whatever about for me now i'm now a family man you know i mean so so my priorities have changed a lot in life and uh keeping my wife and kids safe in the car now is a much higher priority you know i mean so that's Hence why I'm bringing it up to this guy up in, uh, in Navin, who, again, promises the sun, moon, and stars, but this time I've seen his work. And this time I, um, I'm i going to be getting stuff in writing. I'm gonna be making sure that there's a, a written agreement, uh, at the very least a written quotation, and uh, where a time frame is agreed upon, like an outside time frame, and a, a not to exceed cost. So, you know, uh, that's so that's what we're looking to do here. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I mean, look, I, I, as I said, I did fall out of love with the car for a while and yeah, it, like, a lot of the stuff, like, there was a lot of things that kind of left a bitter taste in my mouth, but you know what, it's, it, I've never had a car this long and I've got a lot of history in this car. You know, this was my wedding car. This was the car I brought my, my now wife on a, one of our first dates in. This is the car that I, you know, I we've been through a lot together you know to be honest with you so it, I'm, I'm kind of attached to it and um, although I did think about selling it I think uh, I think I'd be I'd regret selling it if I did now at this stage so yeah um, let's see what happens at this point anyway and hopefully this chap will actually do a good job and get it all, get it to the point where I want it and um, hopefully I'll be happy with the outcome and uh, yeah we'll, we'll just have to we'll just have to see um, but I'll be monitoring his progress very closely and if I'm not happy with how he does, I will be uh, not paying him. It's the short answer. Um, but uh, yeah, the oil pressure light is on. The engine might be getting a little bit hot and bothered. Um, there is oil pressure. I have the gauge here, but uh, sometimes in a Beetle engine, uh, when you get a when the oil pressure light is flickering on idle, um, it's uh, it's simply because of the fact that. Um, the engine's getting a bit hot and bothered but also it's because it's idling slow because of that blocked idle jet so maybe it's just that anyway look i'm not overly concerned um so yeah anyway look i'll bring you back when um when i have uh when we get there and um yeah we'll see how everything is looking then there's a motorway on ramp coming up jeez people I never bloody well indicate roundabouts So I'm literally just about to pull up now. The uh, car just didn't miss a beat on the whole journey. So uh, happy days. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's see what uh, see what he has to say and what uh, what he thinks about uh, what's been done to the car. 
All right, so that lad is definitely making all the right noises. He knows his stuff. He can see what the problem is and um, is uh, giving me the, the right vibe as to how long it's going to take him and uh, what the priority is going to be. So basically, he's, he said he could take it in in two and a half months' time and it would take him about a month to have it uh, like all in to get it all sorted out and I've asked him to do things like do a machine polish on it and stuff like that as well and address a couple of other concerns I have so yeah it's not the cheapest job I'd ever get but to be honest with you cheap has not served me well in this instance so far so I would uh, I prefer to spend the money so uh, he'll be getting it and um, yeah I think probably what I will do is I'll hold off until the end of the summer though to get it up to him and um, that'll leave me with a few uh, a bit of time to do some of the other jobs on it as well I have to tell you it's surreal driving down this road I uh, I used to live down here so uh, down this direction anyway and I haven't been back this way since so um, yeah fucking ramps Jesus uh, <laughs> but yeah um, it's a bit of a kind of a nostalgia trip so yeah um, anyway no look I'm I'm, uh, I'm really happy now with uh, with uh, what Mauro was saying um, and uh, yeah it's it all seems very positive he's got a good setup there he's not the one who does the paint the people who do the paint are the ones who actually uh, they have a boot but they're doing the 1303 restoration there now at the moment and you'd want to see it i mean it's immaculate now to be honest with you okay definitely not a cheap job but uh yeah it's it's really really good now to be honest with you um so yeah anyway look uh stay tuned anyway folks and i'll keep you updated with the progress in this car as i said i have a few other jobs i want to do on it myself now over the next little while so i'm gonna i'm gonna tip away at them in the meantime and uh yeah so uh i'll chat to you soon and don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you go